Do you know that traction of spine provokes hernia? Are you really indifferent to what doctor does to your spine? What will happen to your spine after traction in a month, in a year? At the cost of what you will get temporary release of pain? Answers for all these questions we have found in the book of Igor Mikhailovich Danilov Osteochondrosis for a Professional Patient. The book of Akademician Danilov starts with wonderful words. The awareness of patient is not less dangerous for the well-being of doctor than incompetence of a doctor for the health of patient. First of all, we have to remember that our health is on our own responsibility, and our ignorance causes our problems. Today, let us talk about one of the most widespread methods of spine treatment as traction. Oh, I remember this procedure. Imagine, guys, you enter the room, get a warm welcome, of course, for a big sum of money. Then, as you move further, the more you realize that even though it looks like comfortable conditions, but really, guys, it's Middle Ages. There's, there's the table, something like that, <laughs> yeah. So there's the table, that creepy person looking like a butcher. I mean, a real butcher. Overall, they always wear. You get laid, bound to that bed, and they start pulling. Look, I really did feel released. After they did, after they did it, and after the tortures were over, and thanks God that they let me go. Yeah, they let you go. <laughs> so, you went through such tortures and pain came once again? Of course it did, and I don't get what I had paid money for, because in two weeks I felt the spine was in pain again. Why? The answer lies in the essence of the method. This is how our spine looks from one side. Let us examine the loin. There is a protrusion between second and third vertebras. Protrusion is a small outpouching of a disc considered an early stage of hernia. And this is how the hernia itself looks like. Here we can see a degenerative disc, which has a lower height and nervous root pinched. And this is how wedge-like the segment looks during the traction procedure. Look, simple physics, nothing difficult. Here we have two neighbor vertebras. Interdisc is between them. During the traction, nerve ending, which was stiffed in pathological state, is set free. That's why person feels temporary release. But during this procedure, fibrous ring is traumatized. And after the traction, vertebras come to their pathological position, so the nerves are stiffed again and moreover, fibrous ring is traumatized. It brings us to an important conclusion – that traction only provokes hernia. That's what I meant. You know, it reminded me of many stories from this book. For example, a case of 19-year-old girl. She used to work on the computer, sitting all the time, so her back started to hurt. <laughs> what a rare job in our times. All of us spend much time sitting, working on the computer. According to the information given in the book, the spine load in segments L4, L5 of 70 kg men in lying position is 20 kg, while standing and walking from 70 to 100 kg, and while sitting, 140 kg. And this is the main factor causing osteochondrosis. But we spend 80% of time sitting, exactly, at work, at home, in the car, really. Oh. So the 19-year-old girl saw the traction advertisements and went to a specialist, so-called. And after his treatment, she ended up searching for a qualified neuropathologist to remove the defects that were caused by traction. Can you imagine that? So not even to cure, but at least remove the defects done? Huh? To return the pathology, which was there before the traction. Right you are calling it an inquisition procedure. Speaking of inquisitional treatment, I made some marks in the book. Because some moments have really impressed me. Yeah. Look, this is a torture instrument of inquisition in the Middle Ages. Here is a rack, a man bound to it, and here are the inquisitioners who are stretching him out with the help of this thing. Doesn't it remind you something, doctors? <laughs> and here is a couch whereon two men are stretching a spine of the tortured one. 
I'm so happy I hadn't lived in 15th century. <laughs> Guys, this is the Hippocrates couch. By the way, looks like Hippocrates wasn't father of medicine. He was the father of Inquisition. But what have changed in that time? I found the treatment of Hippocrates of those times. So, it turns out that the treatment of spine diseases was preceded in by three main methods. First one is when a man was bound to the ladder, being covered with pillows. Then this ladder was picked up with a man bound to his head, whether f head first, whether feet first, depending on the complexity of disease, and then ladder with a man was leaned against the wall or some tower and dropped down on a hard place. The harder the better, as they say. The man fell down, and if he survived, it was called recovery from hump or so-called hypnosis. What is traction? Two men sat on a chair according to their own preferences, one of them pulled from one side, the second one from another. And the third man strokes a poor patient with oak stick or plate till, till the complete recovery. Besides the oak plate, there was one more method of traction, so-called Hippocrates bench. In the matter of fact, it is traction table. Just listen to the words of Hippocrates about this message from a famous book Hippocrates collection. Also, it wouldn't harm if someone would sit on the hump of sick man during the traction. And raising himself will make some snatching. It would also help to step with foot on hump, making moderate pressure. So this is how they treated patient with kyphosis in ancient times. Firstly threw with a ladder from height, then jumped and trembled down sore spot, and in the end poor thing got beating with wooden stick. Oh yes, indeed. They made doctors work easier. Nowadays principle of traction are still the same. The only difference is that doctors don't stretch the patient, but now computers do. And this is the Hippocrates? This is Hippocrates, the father of medicine? But in advertisements they always say that these are the methods of Hippocrates, the father of medicine itself. So whom the doctors owe to when they take a Hippocratic oath? They owe to strike a patient with oak stick until complete recovery? But in advertisements they keep using the name of Hippocrates, attracting people, promising to cure them. I wonder if they even have read the works of Hippocrates, I doubt that. It's like a time machine, nothing has changed since the time of Inquisition. In those times people were only suffering from it, and nowadays they also pay for it <laughs> on their own. More than that, they think that they are on the path to recovery. It sounds funny, but in fact it's actually sad. By the way, Hippocrates in his own works wrote a very interesting phrase. Listen. Life is short. Life is short. It's short anyways, doctors say. Life is short. Then, the way of art is long. Why learn? Why study? The way of art is long anyhow. The opportunity is fleeting. Get your money, run before they got you. Because the opportunity is fleeting. Experience is deceptive. The treatment didn't help? How can you prove? Oh, wait, you can prove? Experience is deceptive, you know. Consideration is hard. Why think? Pay, we'll think for you. Consideration is hard. We will tell you what to pay for. I wonder if doctors even give their patient an actual photograph of the real result of their so-called recovery. I saw it in the book, by the way. Here you can see the pictures of a spine before the method of traction was used. And here there is one more where you can clearly see the traction have provoked hernia. They only give bills, you know. <laughs> yeah, and the pictures which I've seen clearly show that the pathology has increased after the traction. Then what do patients pay money for a temporary release of pain? So not for the removal of a cause, but for the removal of pain, only pain. And again, it brings us to the fact that our ignorance, our lack of knowledge, is the cause of our problems. Yeah, and along with it, it allows doctors to use methods which are not effective, and people become their eternal patients. So, guys, be careful and watchful. Don't throw yourselves into modern inquisitions, so-called children of Hippocrates. All the best!